Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. My name's Mark, my wife Tara, daughter Tiana, and we have somebody coming to check our farm out. This is Marina, and Marina is taking veterinary school. Yes, I am. Okay, and she is here to feed some hungry we're baby we're lambs. Hands in there, right? <laughs> Do you have any experience around, um, like, other... Uh, like uh, with them uh, at all? Uh, mostly chickens. Like no. All right. Well, these are. Um, <laughs> all right. These are the hungry lambs. Uh, <laughs> they were brought in uh, three weeks ago. Um, so now, as a vet looking at them, um, their tails aren't docked. Mm -hmm. So they should have been docked at two days old. Okay. Um, and what that does is it prevents fly strike when they're older. Uh, because they're wool animals, the flies get in there, they lay mm -hmm. eggs, maggots, whatnot, so they'll have to be... Now you can do it, but it's surgical and it's a lot more painful for them. So we'll just make sure that they uh, have good homes. Hello. Sheldon. Hello. <laughs> That's Sheldon. Hi. Hi, and you'll notice he's a little off. Okay. Uh, he was born with, yeah, see, that's a little off. <laughs> he was born with neurological damage. Um, vets actually gave him a 0% chance to survive. No, no vet could touch him. Um, his brain was wired to the right, okay. and so he couldn't stand up. Oh. So a lot of some, um, he, we kept him in a small container, um, propped up and interacting with him, mm -hmm. always redirecting his head. It took eight months to get him to stand up. Oh, wow. Um, now he's just special. Um, <laughs> so he's Uncle Sheldon, uh, right? Um, so we think of him as autistic. Okay. Something was kind of what, so he squirrels, <laughs> right? He does weird things and squirrels. Goat's milk is number one for any, and I know a lot of vets that recommend for like cats, dogs, um, they'll recommend that type of milk, goat's milk. Hands down, goat's milk all around, and that's because it's got more more protein and fat. Or, yes, I know. Do you buy goat's milk or? We buy powdered goat's milk so that we always have it on hand as a rescue. We'll get them at all times of the year. All right, watch it. Okay. okay. We're gonna get it in there because that's the tricky part, right? And then Marina can take over. That one won't take long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So again, whenever you're uh, bottle feeding, always make sure that the air, the, the milk, the milk is they're getting the milk from the air. She doesn't take long. Yes, JJ. You know they're getting milk when their tails wagging. So as soon as their tail starts going, then you know they're getting. That's it. Suck it up, right? All right, next, right next is Willow. Now when they're first, when they first come in, and let's say they're not taking the bottle, mm -hmm. and you have to get them on the bottle, usually they're weaker or um, lethargic or dehydrated. Um, <laughs> then the, the, you'll notice that when they're not sucking this nipple, it drips. Okay. We'll leave it in their side of their jaw head up like they would if they were under mom and it would drip down and they'll swallow you can tube them but most of the time the tubing um, is more dangerous than, uh, and more invasive right willow <laughs> go girl so do you go to rescue them or people bring them to you most of them are brought here we've only ever gone off yard a few times but most of the time they're surrendered right <laughs> <laughs> I know the tails are hilarious. It's like a little worm. It just yeah. is. <laughs> if they were to, um, a lot of people worry about aspirating. Um, at this age, it's more of a cough. JJ drinks way too fast um, and will cough it up. Um, it's like a lot of the time you just work with gravity. You know, if you think that you're getting, especially when you're dripping them, um, it's all gone, JJ. <laughs> You did good. I mean Willow. Um, obviously gravity. I know he's a little weird. But that's Sheldon. That's Sheldon. Um, these boys in here are now what? 11 weeks? Almost 12 weeks old? April, May, 
April, May, yeah, June. beginning of April. Be, so they'll be 12 weeks old this week. It's, um, so if you look at their back ends, they've all been banded. You want to band um, at about uh, 10 weeks old. Eight to 10. Eight to 10 weeks old. Um, and then, so it's great to see what that looks like because it's such an easy process. And then what happens is it just dries and falls off. If they were on their mother, they would be underneath here. And what of course is down there is lanolin. So they would have the moisture. So we have to put the lanolin on her ears. Yeah, because normally they would be getting it from underneath mom who produces that's the like Instead of sweat, they produce lanolin. Okay. Right? So her ears are dry. <laughs> She's got pointy toes though. She does. They hurt when she. Okay. I have a bruise. Who else is there? <laughs> Who else is there? Jeez, I, I just want to fill you with information. <laughs> One step at a time. One step at a time. Okay. I know your feathers. Look at them all. Goodbye. I'm going to go get her feathers. You paint them? Oh. You make some like arts and crafts? Yeah, like that? yeah. Yeah. So these yeah. white ones, it's the geese, and, and they're amazing for doing that with. This is Fernando. I think I read about him online. Yeah. Fernando the Latin lover. So when it comes to animals' body language and all that kind of stuff, see how his tail is facing you? Mm -hmm. That means he's paying attention to you. Oh. If you move, come walk this way. Walk, walk around him quickly. You'll see his tail will change. Yeah. It's like a satellite dish. Okay. Where he's red down here, Mm -hmm. um, it's actually modeled right now. Um, it, it's bright red. He's content, happy, happy go lucky. Um, when it changes color, depending on the people's moods in the yard, oh, okay. it's like a mood ring. If you were to be right on petting him and all that kind of stuff, it would go white, he'd fall in love. Mm -hmm. um, so it changes colors and you can tell who kind of has issues, <laughs> um, which is kind of funny. But you can pet his head. He, he's flirting with you is what he's doing. So the sound is him flirting. Rub it like a bald guy. Or feathers, you can rub his back. He just can't rub his belly because he really likes that. <laughs> okay. And that's why he's, because he's, he's flirting. Because he, he likes humans. He's pretty. Okay. Oh, is he cute? <laughs> There's so many, eh, Tiana? Right now, uh, alpacas just came in, so you have to feel my. Um, <laughs> Don't try to lift it up. No, no, you should leave it hanging, right? Yeah. Um, with alpacas, one of the main things, because they're they're main where they're from, mm -hmm. um, Peru, right? Yeah, uh, they are. Their their main um, feed, grasses and food, is in between rocks and they have to, uh, their teeth often will grind on the rocks to shave them or to, to keep them low. So the main issue with alpacas mm. now is their teeth, mm. maintaining their teeth. So Shanzi, I'm trying to see, Shanzi, Shanzi, Shanzi I think's back in the right, yeah. Yeah, that's Shanzi. So when she came in, hi Shanzi, <laughs> see, now I know. When she came in, her teeth were up past her nostril. Yeah, so we, we did that. She'll probably have to have them done next year um, as long as they're, they're hitting the palate, um, then uh, we're okay. But as soon as they start missing that or going past it, we have to trim them back. I'm coming. I'm coming. Here you go. So this is and Piper. They came in four years ago. You're going to go in there, Mark? Um, They were so fat they couldn't walk. Go in there with Mark. Three of them 
before, because we got five in fairly recently, we've had to expand the hallway and put more bins in. Dee Dee and Piper actually used to eat out in the hall too, but we've moved them in here to give, uh, give these guys some space. And they know the routine. Actually, Paula and Shanzi, which are on the end, um, we actually got them to train these guys and they just followed the girls in without a problem. <laughs> we normally don't have a goat in here. Oh, did Coco get in? Oh no. <laughs> The chaos. Oh, I can't be really relaxed. <laughs> You're okay, Java. She usually spits at each yeah. other, oh. not at yeah. people. I don't think she's ever actually spit directly towards the person. There's been times where we've got caught in a crossfire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's your fault. Yeah, too. yeah. <laughs> you can see it coming. She'll, she'll, she'll be like. <laughs> Oh, did she go? Yeah. yeah. Are you done? So the two at the end are girls, the rest are all boys. Okay. Are they like neutered or spade? Yeah, the boys are, yeah. Or else they'll fight to the death. They're very, very aggressive when they're not fixed. There's only, I think Jasper is the only one interested in the girls, isn't it? Jasper has <laughs> Jasper's, Jasper's over there. He's, he knows what uh, how things work out. Yeah, they came in like, all got, together. Got my own much. food, and then at times I got my own girls. <laughs> He's just a mama's boy, yeah? Yeah, I guess so. That's probably why. No, I'm not Turbo, you're late for dinner. Breakfast. Thank you, Parker. Hold on, Paula. Don't spit on your way out, please. Do you like to go slow and steal your car keys on the ground? Yeah. Come on, she, me, Parker. She scours Come the on. ground. No, no, no. Oh, no, we go. He's been done. Like, he's. The only reason Carl was our stud, we kept Billy because as a child, he's the only one that stood up to his dad. Only one. You live a lonely life as a stud goat. So we're like, and they love each other. So they hang out and they, they hang out together. So, which was awesome. They bust their horns together and tear down trees and buildings and, you know, they have fun together. Um, but they're just, we, we knew you gotta keep the blood new, right? You wanna keep the, so he's taking really big charge and he shouldn't be taking charge. You want clean blood. So we're thinking of getting a new guy. New guy on the block, but we'll fix them first. Yeah, you guys. Which, if that's the decision, you guys, we need to make that so that we can uh, get that done soon, right? They're very friendly. Mm -hmm. They're just when for new people who do, people who don't know how to um, play with them, they can be rough, right? They can break your leg if your leg gets in there the wrong way. Um, when they play fit, we raise them with, uh, with us and play fighting and, and whatnot. So they will not actually hit a human, but the human doesn't know that, right? Because you yeah. like to play, you stink. <laughs> you seriously stink. You have yeah. urine all over your you, right? It's not as bad now. Is it oh, it is. It's wet. Yeah, but it's not as bad as it would be during breeding season. Right? And he likes to. Yeah, during breeding season, I get out of the car after work and, and I'm like, ooh, it. there's something in the air. <laughs> Way over there. <laughs>
Right? You know, oh, you like the horse. That's Meadow. <laughs> so Meadow was the first horse ever born here, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, the only, the only horse, the ever, only born horse here. ever born here. Ow! Yeah. Nope, that was my thigh. He's such a little shit. <laughs> Oh, well, I can use go. Uh, oh, yawn. No, you don't need her clothes. <laughs> no. No. Oh, no. He, he. Feel free to give him a little tap. Daisy's my little troll. I love you. Hey. Mm -hmm. You're my good girl. Hey. So now she's, yeah, she came in. It's literally <sighs> gave all up. Yeah, I know. She was. They oh, like my God. leg. Oh, yes. You already had a shower. Why? 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 Well, why? Yeah, I had a shower, so now he's got to put his scent on. Wow. There. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> no teeth, though. Not, no teeth. Sensitive, most sensitive part of a horse is their nose. Small little taps do big things. No, don't. <laughs> that, that. Oh, he's come a long way. When he, that, no. When he first came in, oh, yeah. you were a stubborn little stud. He says, I just want to hold on to somebody. Right? I'll hold on to Tiana. She loves me. She loves me. So we just said goodbye to Marina, and she will be back uh, next weekend. So this was kind of just an orientation weekend. Uh, she needs a certain amount of volunteer hours as part of her curriculum. Uh, so getting out and, um, and seeing, getting out onto the farm and getting that hands-on experience. So apparently she's working with, uh, she's trying to get into a couple other vets, the large animal vets. Uh, I guess it's easier to probably get into the uh, the small animal or the dog and cat vets that you would find in the city, probably because of the sheer number of them. There's probably quite a few of them. Um, so the large uh, animal vets are uh, are one that she's interested in. So we may be we have been thinking about uh, retiring the boys, Billy and Carl, uh, and then getting another male as the replacement. Uh, so that'll either happen this year or next year, but it's, you know, we're kind of leaning towards that. Um, so if it's going to be this year, then maybe we will plan the procedure to have them, uh, have them fixed. Uh, and then uh, she can be part of that when the vet comes out to, uh, to do that work. Now the kid goats. So the kid goats, of course, nine of them, seven boys and two girls. And Uncle Sheldon here in the center. Uh, so we have, I believe, five of them are going next week. Uh, so the two, uh, the two Duke boys here, Bo and Luke. Uh, so they're going to be heading off. I believe it's Monday. And then we have Gizmo, we have Thor, and we have Loki, which is this one. <laughs> uh, I've been looking at Tungsum and, uh, and Loki, and of course they're both black, but Loki is a little bit smaller, so it's easier to see when, or sorry, Tungsten is a little bit smaller, so you can, when you see them together, you can get the idea. Uh, but Tungsten also has that little white spot, right, in between his horns. Uh, so that is, uh, that's an easy telltale. When we had Tungsten and Radium, uh, in the house because they were Blackie's kids and they weren't doing very well at all in the beginning. Uh, when we had them in, uh, Tungsten's little white spot actually resembled a heart. Uh, it's kind of, uh, it's not quite a heart now, but as they grow and their hair, uh, their hair blends in, uh, of course things change. Uh, then we're going to be left with uh, Lulu and Patches, which are the two only girls that were on this uh, this group, uh, and then we have, of course, um, yeah, tungsten and radium as well. Uh, so they're going to be going. We actually have a waiting list for our goats, and um, you know we've got uh, people lined up uh, even before, sometimes even before the uh, the breeding even begins. Um, so they're very friendly because they're the setting that they have and they have visitors that come out and the way they're raised and the way we handle them, uh, they are very friendly. Uh, so they, um, they do good in a, uh, you know, in a, in a pet kind of uh, environment. So they all go, uh, go as pets. 
we've been in contact with uh, with a few of them. Tara, you know, keeps people on the on social media, Facebook, and just kind of you know checks in. And and if there's any issues with any of these goats, uh, they do come in. Uh, if you remember, Lizzie uh, came in, which was Sheldon's sister. Uh, there was an issue there, so she came in, and then you know she ended up uh, heading back out again. Uh, so we're always there for people who do um, take our goats as well as of course any other goats uh, or sheep lambs uh, so these two lambs here they've been with us a few weeks now a week two weeks two weeks I think it was time flies <laughs> um, and these guys were purchased by somebody who didn't realize uh, that uh, they are well it was just a bad decision because they work on the road uh, and even with the pandemic and everything, they're still away from the house. So they got them because, you know, they're just so cute. It's one of those <laughs> quick purchases. You know, how can you resist, right? Uh, and then realized afterwards that uh, this may not have been the best decision. Uh, so then they contacted us. Hey, <laughs> Sheldon, are you, you're going to miss them, buddy. <laughs> Uh, Onyx and Moira, so Onyx is here, and Moira, yeah, Moira's eyesight is, uh, is not doing too great. Um, Onyx is kind of the seeing eye sheep, usually the two of them hang out together. Hi girl, how you doing? Yeah, uh, so she was actually surrendered to us because, well, she's an older, older girl. Uh, she is a Shetland sheep, and she was having some issues with her eyes, um, and it it seems to be progressing. She can, who knows how how much she can see. Uh, she can see things, uh, but the clarity is just kind of unknown. So her eyes kind of just weep, uh, and they are slightly clouded. Um, so she's got her little uh, seeing eye sheep onyx <laughs> to help her out. Oh, Fernando, what are you doing, hunting? He's in hunting mode. You don't usually see that very often. He's usually in flirting mode. <laughs> oh, the tail's slowly coming up. Here it comes. He, he doesn't, uh, he can't make a decision on whether to flirt or eat. Oh, I think flirting's now taken over, yeah. <laughs> you can't, you can't resist, can you, buddy? <laughs> Uh, so sheep and goats all out here just hanging out. It's supposed to be another warm day. Uh, I just wanted to touch base in here with, uh, last week I showed you Bronwyn and how she was uh, molting. Molting? Shedding, I guess. Molting, shedding. Uh, so she is, um, she is a haired sheep and you can see that she looks much better than she did last week. She's still got a couple tufts hanging on the back end. Um, but um, <laughs> she's uh, she's looking a little more cleaner, right, Chansey? Paula, where are the boys? All the boys must be out back. Usually, uh, Jasper is uh, is the one that kind of hangs out with the girls. So I guess he's uh, he's out with the boys. It's the boys' weekend, is it? Fernando, what are you doing back here? Always looking for people, aren't you? <laughs> Out into the garden with Tara. And we have finally decided to change these plastic uh, pegs that weren't working with actual pegs. Now these pegs, I figured, are over 20 years old. <laughs> now my sister lives in Calgary, and when they were building their house, uh, there was uh, a pack of I think 50 of these strapped together and they were beside the garbage bin. So I threw them in the car and um, I sanded down the one side and then we laser engraved uh, what uh, each item is. Peppers and hollyhocks and lady slipper and all of the items. Uh, and it actually um, lasered pretty quickly because it was a carve, or sorry, it was a cut instead of a carve. So, uh, so that, I think they'll work nice. Yeah. And we'll be able to know what is what. 
Well, when we get people, sometimes I'll be like, go to the garden, but then people don't know what, oh, that was the difference, if you want to show them the difference. Oh, yeah. Um, so this was the first one. This is a, uh, a carve, and this is a cut. So, yes, this one would be clearer, but this one took ten times longer to cut than this one. Um, so, uh, with the sheer number of pegs, and I've still got six packages, I think. So there's still right. 300 pegs that, uh, and we've used them over the years for various reasons. You could probably cut them in half too and do smaller ones if people wanted them, you know what I mean? Like You could, yeah. So recycled pegs. So if you find something that looks good that you may have a use for, and you have the room <laughs> to store them, then, uh, then this is a great idea. He's always here to get some bits <laughs> and then the other ones come in. So this is Jerry, Hi Tara's there. best friend. <laughs> she's come to help. You can see she's got the hatchet in her hand. <laughs> yes, I know. Yes. She is, uh, she's putting in the stakes. <laughs> uh, so here we go. We've got, um, so there's honeyberry. Now I, I know exactly right? what's going on. Asparagus, there's the one carved out catnip. Uh, so, we, she's got them in all of her areas. If there's anything else that she needs to be printed off or laser engraved, that can be done. Tomatoes. And then she's got a bunch in here. So there's the peppers. So that would be a pepper row, celery, celery row. And then tomatoes, of course, in the back. Apple. Celery. Seeds and apple cubes. Oh, this is an avocado. Uh, Braxton, Braden and Braxton brought me an avocado tree that they seeded. Oh, well that's cool. So, huh. apparently it likes it likes to be raised. Uh, the sloss poop, really, so we're thinking in rabbit poop would be really good. Oh, so you're not saying we need to get sloss? No, oh, I love <laughs> Really? <laughs> She's got a stuffed sloth. I'd be like, I'd be like that sloth would be like my best friend. It's like, let go, I'd be your legs. <laughs> uh, so now, yeah, we have everything all figured out. Uh, there were Brussels sprouts, which are here. It's the only one we forgot to do. Well, uh, so I just quickly raised we just laser did engraved. We did broccoli that instead one. of Brussels sprouts. Oh, is that what it was? Yes. Do we not have broccoli? No, I didn't plant broccoli. Oh, okay. Well, we got some extra broccolis. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, everything's uh, growing up. We're gonna harvest some uh, some salads. Uh, here's our, our poppy and our chocolate mint over there. Uh, so the salad bar over here, uh, we are going to harvest a bunch of this here and we are gonna have some uh, some taco, what is it? Some taco Mexican salad, taco salad, taco salad, I guess. Yeah, so that's, uh, we're gonna be eating out of the garden today. Uh, and have uh, our taco salad because this is uh, this is growing up nicely. So we got to start eating some of it. So do these? Did you water these? Yeah, don't poke them. Oh, I don't know. I just they seem water. a little dry. At night. I guess because they're right in the sun. I water at night. Okay. All right. I'm just checking. Right? You're in charge of the garden. Right. You look at it. Hey, look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got this. Okay. So give us a quick tour. Let's see what's. Uh, What's up, Brussels sprouts? Well, of course, these ones are the larger ones that you had bought, was it? And you put in yeah, this one? Yeah, but they're the, they were that big. Like, yeah. they're the same size as those, like tinier, half the size of those. So, and these ones over here are the ones she planted from seed. No, no. From seed? No, no, they were the same size as these. Oh, they were? Yeah. Okay, so this is the difference between the bale, bale. and rabbit. the uh, rabbit poop. So, <laughs> So there is, uh, there it is in there, and these will work good. It just takes a long time to you do the uh, the hay bales like or weekly. straw bales. Yeah. Yeah, you have to water and fertilize weekly. So as we've done on those sections out there that are that are raised beds now, 
um, we are going to do the same thing in here by closing them in yeah. and then adding the soil to it that's been steeping for yes, that almost two decades. Yes, that is the way we're going on everything. And, uh, and then this will then take off uh, in the following but season. But I'll tell you, if you really have a problem with those flea beetles, so plant it's, canola. Yeah, so it has worked then. Plant it's, canola. These ones don't have the canola around, right? No. And so you can see them you can all see, over. Yeah, you can see some of the... Uh, yeah. Not a whole lot, but you can see some there. It's because they're over at the canola. Yeah, the canola seed, they tend to oh, like the plants. Oh, I so. see the flowers coming on the cuckoo melons. Look. Tara gets so excited Look with her... Uh, cuckoo melon! <laughs> oh, you know, it is... Like, when you see a baby melon... Oh, weed! <laughs> Weed, weed. And oh, then, well. yeah, so they'll just grow up on this yeah. netting here and then uh, they're just plucking. Uh, usually she can't reach that high, so I get the ones that are yeah. a little higher up. <laughs> <laughs> the, these guys are doing really well, but I've been, I, they were actually mad at me. I didn't water last night and I regretted it. So. Mm. Well, it was supposed to rain. So, All the peas have yeah, believing what the forecast uh, tells us isn't always the, uh, the best trust it. game plan. So peas are all getting flowers. No flowers on the beans yet, but the peas all have flowers. And of course the carrots are doing very well. Uh, they are uh, clumped all together, yeah. uh, but we're gonna use some of them as garnishing as well. So we've never actually grown large carrots, <laughs> but um, are you gonna pick one? Yeah, they're very little. <laughs> make, make a wise choice. Make a wise choice. Yeah, which one's that? See if I can get a big one. Big which, leaves. Which one's no, the biggest? No, leaves are not important. Not it. I would say the stem, yeah. wouldn't it? Well, you can actually see the crown of the... Oh, the crown of the... Oh, look at that. <gasps> oh, yeah, that's a good size. There we go. We're going to eat them in our salad. Yes. Wipe, wipe the, yeah. <laughs> Eat the whole thing. Eat it. Yeah, eat the whole thing. Yeah, city girl. Yeah. Right? Mm. Look. It's good. Eat the whole thing. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, you're yeah, not going to do it. I'm a city girl. <laughs> girl, eat it. Uh, yeah, she'll give it to the animals. <laughs> you wasted a carrot. Yeah, no. I ate it. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that comes to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful, educational. And if you're not subscribed, I ask that you click on that subscribe button and join us uh, in our shenanigans, as Tara would normally say it. <laughs> uh, so I wish you all a happy week, happy and safe week, and we will see you in the next video. Take care and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.